Hey guys, how's it going? Zach here. So I believe I mentioned in a previous video that I was going to be looking into getting a Steam Deck. So I do have one now and I have been enjoying it and it's been, you know, a ton of fun to see what the system can do, you know, what it's capable of, things that aren't even advertised as features, you can always maybe find a way to get to work. So I want to show you my Steam Deck and what I have on it so you can decide if you are, want to get one yourself. Uh, if you already have one, maybe it'll help you determine if you want to get into the deeper side of things like dual booting um, and just adding little tweaks and such to your uh, deck so that way you can have a more full experience. All right, so for this video, we're not really going to be reviewing the Steam Deck like a normal review. It's going to be more of what is on my system, what did I do differently than you might do if you just get it and don't have a ton of knowledge about the potential of this system. So uh, I guess to begin with, um, we'll talk about the exterior, what I've done. <laughs> it's very minor. I added these little joystick rings, if you want to call them that. Um, they're found on Amazon. They were $10 for, I believe, a 10 pack. So it's a little pricey um, for what they are, but I feel better about my joysticks not really grinding against that plastic. It's kind of hard to see that I have the little ring on there, but they're basically just little rubber bands that protect your you know steam deck joystick from rubbing against the little outer ring and then the case that i have is the uh, j socks or j s a u x i'm not sure how to really say it uh, you can see the logo there kind of hard to see but it does have a kickstand and you know it just provides a decent amount of protection i actually basically almost use this as a physical dock really because what i do is i put the kickstand on and then, you know, I can just prop it up like that. And then I can just plug in a USB-C hub that has, you know, HDMI to my TV. And then it's kind of like half the dock. So you don't have, you know, the, the docking capability without the actual USB-C hub. But this kind of acts like a dock when you do put the kickstand up. So that's kind of cool. Let's go ahead and turn it on. So it takes a second. It's going to boot into my dual boot screen. It'll default to SteamOS, um, but you can also choose Windows. I think it just takes a couple seconds to choose SteamOS by default, but I'm just going to go ahead and manually do it. And then we're going to be booting into SteamOS. All right, so now that we're in SteamOS, um, you'll probably notice really I haven't changed anything, and that's partially true. What I have changed, though, is some things behind the scenes that'll you know make your life a little bit easier. So if I go ahead and hit these three dots, like a little quick, ac quick access menu, um, you'll see at the very bottom, I have something called Decky. It's like a little plug symbol down there. Let me see if I can highlight it. Well, anyways, it's right there. That allows you to get plugins on your Steam Deck. And basically what plugins do, they just add little tweaks that maybe aren't in Steam OS by default. So you're almost adding functionality that isn't officially on there. So for example, Vibrant Deck is a pretty popular one. It basically allows you to get a little bit brighter, or not necessarily brighter, but more colorful colors. <laughs> so higher saturation, um, I have mine set at 140, and I found that to be a pretty good balance, um, you know, between not being too colorful, but still adding a bit more um, vividness to basically everything. <laughs> it does the entire, you know, screen. Next plugin that I have is Steam Grid DB which essentially it allows you to add cover art for your games that don't have it. So if you add any third party games, uh, you know, this will allow you to get cover art that isn't in SteamOS by default because it's a third party game. It doesn't know what cover art to even show you. It's just, here's the title, that's all you get. So this allows you to add those, you know, pictures and uh, little icons and stuff. And then finally, I have uh, Proton DB badges, and this allows you to check on the Steam Store or in your library um, if a game is actually compatible with um, basically the Steam Deck and just Proton in general, which is the translation layer for SteamOS that allows it to run Windows games. And I'll show you a quick example. So if we go over to Star Wars Battlefront 2, Oddly enough, it says unsupported here, right? It says, nope, we don't, you know, we, can, we don't really recommend you play it. Like you can, you can try it, but it doesn't really know what to make of this game. Um, if I tap on it, it says gold. So that is part of that plugin. And that says, hey, 
this game is pretty compatible. Like it's not, I can't, I can't remember exactly what the highest rank is, but gold is definitely like, you're gonna be fine. Like you might have a couple little weird things here and there, but honestly you have weird things in Windows as well. So it's really not that big of a deal. Um, and that's just nice to see, um, you know, even if it's in your library, you might forget, can I play this? Oh yeah, I can. And then you'll be good to go. So going on to my desktop of SteamOS, you'll see it looks very similar to Windows. What I've added to it is, again, not anything too crazy, but it just adds a little bit of functionality. So uh, EmuDeck, I actually really enjoy emulate emulation on the Steam Deck. It's actually really good. So EmuDeck basically installs all your emulators, uh, you know, configures them to work, for the most part, with the Steam Deck input. So, you know, like your, your trackpads, if for some reason that's supported, joysticks and your buttons. Gyro even in some cases, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so for my desktop I have EmuDeck and then there's this other program that I have called SyncThing. You'll see I have a couple other programs here. Um, SyncThing I actually really like. So basically what you can do is, say if you have a desktop computer, you can sync your save files for non-Steam games. So for example, emulated games, uh, you know, single player games that might not be supported on Steam and you want to play it on your Steam Deck and your main computer, you could do that. And as long as it's on the same network, uh, it'll sync those save files. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, again, you don't need that. It takes a little bit of configuring to get all the, your folders linked and for the, basically for the program to know what to actually upload to your little, you know, mini baby cloud server. <laughs> Other than that, I have, you know, Qubit Torrent. Um, if I'm gonna be downloading any games from certain websites, we'll just say. Um, and then also Brave, I use that uh, as my web browser. I've just found it's pretty reliable. Um, I actually use it over Firefox. Um, I just, I like it. I like how it has the built-in ad blocker, but it's totally your choice what browser you wanna use. So another program that I would recommend getting is called Lutris. It will allow you to install, um, you know, third-party launchers. It will sometimes work with certain games that might not work under just normal Proton. So I've had a couple of cases where um, I believe it was the, one of the Hot Wheels games, for example, here. It wouldn't run under Proton for me. I have no idea why. I just won it. And then I went into Lutris, added a profile, um, added the EXE, and then it basically created its own little Proton version, you could say. And that, you know, allowed the game to run. Um, and I've had that happen just with a handful of games. Sometimes they just do not want to run under Proton and just, you know, regular Proton, and this will force it to work. All right, so now we're going to be checking out Windows. Um, you just go ahead and restart your Steam Deck. And by the way, I forgot to mention, um, this little boot manager is called Refind. I will leave a link to what I use to install it in the description. It's fairly simple. It require, you know, again, a little bit of file browsing, a little bit of file, you know, editing in certain cases if you want to change uh, your background, which I've been struggling to do. So it just has the default um, steel background, but it only shows up for like, you know, six seconds. It's not really a big deal and it's not that ugly to me to, uh, you know, investigate further. And I have the Epic Game Store, I have Battle.net, and then you'll also see I have sync thing on Windows. So yes, I can actually sync, uh, say if I sync a folder from my Linux, you know, SteamOS to my Windows PC, like my actual desktop, I can sync it to that and then that can sync to this. So it's ridiculous the amount of things you can do with the system, right? Like I'm syncing it between basically two different operating systems on one device and an entirely other computer. And you know, you could do this with multiple devices. It's not just, you know, these two. So pretty impressive stuff. Uh, but that is definitely something you'll want to get into when you feel more comfortable um, messing with this. Other than that, you could definitely just keep it stock. You don't have to do any of this. It's just if you want the added functionality. So yes, with Battle.net, I am able to play uh, Warzone, the newest, you know, Warzone 2. I'm able to play that, no problem. Uh, fairly steady frame rate. Uh, I think I'm probably on the like low to medium settings, but yeah, it's it's running great. Um, Epic Game Store for Fortnite, uh, and I think I might have Fall Guys on there too. But yeah, I don't really play those games a ton anymore. But you know, they're nice to have the option to play. And then yeah, I also have Overwatch on uh, Battle.net, so I have basically access to every single game you could want. I can't think of a single game that wouldn't really work on this. 
Um, I've you know played Cyberpunk. I've played like I think playing Warzone is a pretty good testament to you know what this thing can do. It's a pretty roughly optimized game. Um, other than that, on Windows, I don't really have a ton going on. Uh, these are my little like quick access things on Windows 11. I actually quite like Windows 11, especially with touch. Um, but yeah, I just got nothing too crazy going on here, like a VPN if I want to use that, emulators. And then um, one thing I will say uh, that improved my experience on here dramatically. So you can see it's actually pretty responsive. Um, I can you know navigate fairly easily with the touchscreen, which is great. Also have the trackpads here. Uh, one thing that I found was a huge problem for me was I would drag and it would like cut out. It would just cut out, cut out, cut out. I had a screen protector on. It was probably a very cheap Amazon, you know, you get like the three for nine bucks kind of deal. That was not it. That did not work for my Steam Deck at all. It would allow me to tap, you know, maybe sometimes, but something with maybe the polarization, I'm not sure, I have no idea it would just completely interrupt like this, for example. Like I could never do this with that screen protector on. So I did have to take that off. I might look into getting a newer one, maybe a higher quality one, see what other people are buying and see if they have that same issue. So if you do have an issue with your, with your touch screen and you think it's just the Steam Deck, it's actually probably your screen protector. And I refuse to believe that was the case, but it was. Um, so yeah, other than that, I do have a couple other programs that I'd recommend getting if you use a PS4 controller, you could get DS for Windows. That is excellent. It allows you to do like gyro and, you know, set up little profiles with your PS4 controller. Um, and yeah, you can even use your PS4 controller's touchpad as a mouse on here. So pretty great. Um, another one I'd recommend getting, I cannot recall the name of the entire package. Let me see. Ah, oh, man, I think it's called Steam Deck Tools, I wanna say, but yes, I believe that's the name. It comes with fan controls, um, you can get some overlay, you know, performance overlays, um, power control, which I haven't messed with these too much. I usually keep everything pretty stock. Um, it also comes with a Steam controller profile. So even though you don't have Steam running, you can have all of your, oh, there's Overwatch updating. Um, you can have all of your controller settings. Uh, so, you know, your trackpads, you can have certain buttons do certain things just like you would in Linux and, you know, the Steam OS uh, operating system. So yeah, it just adds back a little bit of functionality you might lose going to Windows. So I think eventually take the full leap to Windows and not even use SteamOS, which is really sad because I enjoy SteamOS. I just find the functionality to be a little more complete with Windows. I wouldn't say more polished. It's definitely not more polished. It's just you have access to more games, if that makes sense. So yeah, I, I might eventually switch over, but the one thing I really, really like Steam OS 4 is the emulation. So with emulation on Steam OS, it has that EmuDeck program, which you might be able to get on Windows, but I'm not entirely sure, or something similar. I'm sure you could you know, tinker with that, but I just love how seamless EmuDeck is on Steam OS. It adds all your games to your Steam library. It adds all the cover art. All you do is say, hey, this is my ROM directory. Boom, it'll do it. It'll figure it out. I love that. So just for fun, we're gonna be booting up Warzone and I'll just give you a quick little idea of what you can expect uh, with Warzone. And again, you can find other videos getting more performance stats and such, but I just wanted to show you the you know, experience you have without doing too much performance enhancement or anything like that. All right, we are in a solo match of Warzone just to give you an idea of how this runs. So I'm jumping out and gonna get ready for the match. So as you can tell, uh, pretty smooth. And if there is any stuttering, honestly, that's usually just the game, uh, not necessarily the device, because there's a lot of shader compilation going on in this game. It's, uh, it could definitely use some optimization. But um, yeah, overall, you're going to get pretty good performance. And this is, you know, on the lower presets, uh, but that does not mean it looks bad. It's definitely playable, definitely worth checking out if you enjoy Warzone um, to install Windows and do it this way. And just while we're running around here, I'll you know, mention some other things I've been doing with this device. I've gotten uh, Black Ops 3 on here with you know, all the DLC, and that's been a ton of fun. I haven't played uh, Zombies in, honestly, almost 10 years. I probably played Black Ops 1, and then I skipped out on a lot of the Call of Duties, so there's a ton of stuff for me to check out in Black Ops 3. 
and that's been, you know, that runs amazing. It's full 60 frames per second. I can even put it up to like high settings on there, which is insane. Um, so yeah, that's been super fun. Yeah, just so many different games I've been playing. I'm playing Battlefront 2. Um, I've actually been playing that on SteamOS, and that's been great. Uh, that one was the one that said it was unsupported, but like I said, that Proton DB plugin was like, nope, it's actually fine. You can play it, and I can, and it's great. So yeah, if you were curious about what else you can do with your Steam Deck, maybe that most people aren't showing you online, or maybe you just kind of saw like the announcement trailers and you thought it was cool, but you don't really maybe even have a ton of Steam games, or you're just not interested in Steam that much, that's not all this has to offer. It's really not a lockdown system at all. There's a ton you can do with it, and if you have any questions about any of the things I have installed, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Anyways, guys, let me know what you've been doing with your Steam Deck. What have you installed on it? Um, have you been keeping it you know, stock? Have you been adding fun stuff like this? Let me know, um, and I'd love to hear what you guys have been doing. And if you don't have a Steam Deck, what have you been playing? Have you been playing your PC, uh, Xbox, PS3, <laughs> even? I mean, I've been actually thinking about getting a PS3 because they're so cheap right now. Um, yeah, let me know. Anyways, guys, I will catch you later. Have a good one. All right, so I finished recording, and I totally forgot to show you my little dock station. So I know it's not the most elegant thing, uh, but it is this little USB-C hub called Dock Tech. Um, I'm sure there's a multiple on Amazon of that same name, but this is the one I have. It has Ethernet, which is the main reason I got it. Um, it has, you know, HDMI, micro SD, regular SD, two USBs, and then a uh, USB-C for power. So my Steam Deck charger is right here, and that is being fed basically through this into this cable which, you know, allows you to have HDMI right here, um, which goes to my TV. So yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, it doesn't look too bad, I don't think. It mostly hides all that stuff with, you know, the Steam Deck being here. But yeah, uh, if you're interested in that, I'll also put that in the description. Um, I have this little receiver for like a keyboard if I wanna, you know, browse the internet <laughs> on my computer basically uh, as a huge computer screen or i'm sorry if i want to browse the internet on my tv um as a huge, huge computer screen so yeah anyways i just thought i'd show you that really quick and yeah catch you later